In today's video, I'm just gonna show you guys a bunch of drone footage from Puerto Rico. I kid, let's get started. But before we do, uh, don't forget that in order for this content to start, you have to hit like and subscribe to this channel. All right, uh, so let's talk about, there's a huge statistic, right? The big elephant in the room, uh, that only 17% of people continue with their news resolutions beyond, guess what month? Not March, not April, not May, not June, not July. February. That's a month, guys, if you're doing your math correctly. It means 83% of people give up after the first month. And I have an inkling as to why that's the case. And that's what we're going to talk about here today. We're going to talk about what you can do to actually hit your goals, to actually have effective annual planning. And more importantly, if you don't do annual planning at all, this is going to be your blueprint to get that done. So stick around. We're going to get started. Welcome to today's episode. <music> All right, guys, welcome back. Remember, I'm your host, CMH, founder of Startup U. We're getting ready to start a brand new series on productivity. We're trying to do more series on this channel because I think it gives you information in order, not just random information or you have to go find things that connect or you get little 10 minute clips here and you got to piece it all together. So we're going to start doing series in order and we're kicking off our productivity series. It's timely because it's the beginning of the year. If you're not watching at the beginning of the year, it's okay. Stick around. doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be the beginning of the year. We're kicking off by talking about annual planning. Now, I will say I'm not a huge believer in annual planning. I'm really not. I know that goes against the title of this video. I think it's important that you have annualized goals, but we're going to break those down into quarters. So stick tight. I'm going to walk you through the whole process. There's actually, if you want to hit pause real quick, and while you're down there, hit like and subscribe to the video. Uh, but if you want to grab in the description, there's a link that you can download that is going to be my worksheet, free gift to you, that you can walk through this exercise with me so that you are able to leave this uh, video today and feel like you know what to do. Or you're going to feel empowered. You're going to feel like this is going to be the year. You're going to feel like you're making steps in the right direction. That's what we want. That's what we're going to accomplish. Go ahead and hit pause and grab that link. I'll be here waiting for you. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, for those that didn't hit pause and you're just watching straight through, a um, couple things we want to do. The, the first, my first piece of advice amongst the many other pieces that we're going to talk about here today is to break your environment, right? So cue all of the drone footage and clips from Puerto Rico, uh, because that's where my wife and I usually go to do our annual planning. The reason being is my wife is from Puerto Rico, so her family is still there. So we just kind of wrap up Christmas and, and annual planning all in one, right? It's an amazing place to go. The reason I, I personally, I think we do some of our best annual planning in Puerto Rico is because it is just such a stark removal from our typical environment. We get caught up in the day to day, all the hustle and bustle, doing the same things day in, day out, same environment, same you know, protocol, same habits. We are creatures of habit, whether those are good habits, whether those are bad habits, we get into routines. The problem with annual planning, when you don't break that pattern, right? When there's no pattern disruption, the problem is it's just so hard when you've been doing what you've been doing for so long, right? 365 days a year, maybe longer for some in the same exact environment. The problem is that we're expecting the brain to just have inspiration and new ideas without any form of intention. Breaking that pattern, getting outside of your environment, physically outside of your environment. It doesn't have to be Puerto Rico. Trust me, at one point we were broke, broke, broke. And there's no way that a Puerto Rico trip was in the cards for us. It doesn't have to be something exotic. It doesn't have to be something ridiculous. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Puerto Rico is amazing. I love it and I highly recommend it. And you should absolutely go. However, going to your local Starbucks or your local coffee shop or just going to a library, right? Or a place that inspires you, a place where you feel like you can kind of open up your, your creative thinking and really just dive into it. And more importantly, a place where you're not going to be distracted. So I love these. I, I am A to D to D to D. I invented ADD, I feel like, some days. Um, and so I, I love my noise-canceling headphones. These are, these are the Bose 700s, I think. Um, but anyways, I put these on, I, I lock on some binaural audio with some nice, you know, kind of work music or what have you. And I rock and roll, right? And I'm just locked in and, and nothing in the world is going to bother me, right? I went to a bakery the other day uh, and I just did some, a follow up on some stuff that I needed to do. And I got more done in that hour than I think I would have gotten done in half a day sitting here in my office because there's just distractions and there's things I need to do and all this stuff I need to keep up on. And I need to be in touch with the team and I got to record content for you guys. There's just so much going on. You have to remove the temptation, right? So I put my phone away, I go in there, I put my headphones on, and it's just me and whatever it is that I need to get done. Break the pattern, break whatever it is you need to be doing, focus, be intentional, get outside, and 
literally what you'll find, I think, is you're gonna have all these new ideas and inspiration come to you, and that's fantastic, but it's only the first step of the process. In order to get to step two, you have to like and subscribe to this channel. All right, the next one is, uh, what were your major wins, right? So you got your your nope your your free resource that we're providing for you in the description below. You're gonna download that. the The first one on there is going to be, um, what were your major wins? And you may think, oh my gosh, what does this have to do with my planning for the new year? It absolutely has a lot to do with it. And the reason being uh, is that what we want to do is we have a tendency of focusing on the five percent of things that we didn't do, not the ninety five percent of things that we did do, right? And moreover, and more importantly. Uh, it, it's hard for us to assess uh, what we did well, right? When when you are you and and you don't have the, the the vantage point of someone else looking at you, it's like it's like when you were a kid and you were growing, you didn't notice you were growing because how you're seeing yourself every single day. So we have a tendency of not recognizing the areas that we did well. It's so important for you to analyze and assess these things and to celebrate those wins because what we're going to do next, and this is the next part of the process, going to be step three, uh, is going to be to pull data, right? So we're going to practice our gratitude. We're going to write all of our wins down. These are going to be personal, professional, relational, every way possible. Write down as many wins as you possibly can think of and write them down. Even if they feel minuscule, even if they feel like they're not that big of a deal, write them down. What we're going to do is we're going to lay on top data, All right, So we're going to look at data and this could be uh, obviously primarily in your business, right? So maybe you had a goal uh, from the previous year. You were really going to grow your Instagram. Maybe that didn't happen. Maybe what you do is the data tells you Oh, I look at my Google Analytics and I'm putting all this effort, I put 95% of my effort on social media into Instagram. But look at this, that 2% that I put into Pinterest is actually growing my email list and driving more traffic to my website than the 90% of time or 95% of time I'm spending on Instagram, right? Data is going to give you uh, a, a roadmap. Data is going to justify and validate whether what you're doing was working or whether what you were doing that maybe you didn't think was working is actually working better, right? Maybe that blog that you wrote didn't think anything of it is driving most of your traffic to your website. You're not going to know that until you have the data. More importantly, uh, what you want to look at is what type of content was actually resonating with people. One of the things that we learned uh, from from our data was that people like to hear about us talk about marketing. That was the biggest thing that they think they need. People, you think that you need marketing. Now, I know this. I know that there's a lot more to it than just marketing, right? However, one of the things is, is that uh, you can sell people what they want and then give them what they need, right? If you go into a doctor and the doctor goes off and you know, whatever, it's like, oh my God, you know, you're going to get bad news, right? So you don't want to be the bearer of bad news. You don't want to be the doctor in people's lives. You want to give people what they want because that's what they're searching for, right? So in looking at your data, what you'll find is that will give you what people want, what they're searching for, unless you're not doing any content at all. And maybe that's not the case. This is going to apply to everything, not just marketing. This could be your financial numbers. Maybe what you find is, is that uh, you thought that, that this was going to be great. You know, this, this one thing you're selling is going to be great, uh, but your margins are terrible and you're actually far more profitable in something else, right? So it doesn't have to be marketing. It, it, it's all numbers. It's financial numbers. It's maybe your weight, maybe, you know, that being your personal side of your life with your fitness goals, what have you, right? So pull as much data, extract as much data as you humanly can uh, and gather that here on this worksheet so that you have it because the next step of the process is going to be developing what our goals for the new year are going to be. Now, here's the deal. Here's what we're doing. This is why we did the goals first or our wins first and we did our data second because what we're going to do is we're going to see if there's alignment. We're going to see if what if our wins led to the data. Is there some kind of connection between the data that we pulled and then the wins that we cited? Because we want to look for causation. We want to look for correlation. And what we're going to do then is figure out, okay, do I need to keep doing more of this? Do I need to keep doing less of this? Do I need to keep continuing doing this? Right? So whatever it is that you find from going through the, the, that exercise in those, those, you know, those two steps, we're going to develop the new goals for the new year based on that. Now, now this is important. Whatever your goal looks like for the year, then what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to reverse engineer that. We're going to break that down into quarters, right? The biggest mistake people make with annualized planning uh, is that it's so hard to really gather. Okay, but where am I going to be in a? I don't know where I'm going to be in a year. So much can happen in a year, right? It's just blurry. It's like if you try to give directions from somebody to, from New York to Los Angeles for off the top of your head, I, I have no idea. If you told somebody New York to Ohio, well, if you live in that area, maybe you could actually tell them how to do that, right? So. What we want to do is we want to break that down. We want to say, okay, this is our quarter one goal, right? This is our quarter two goal. This is our quarter three goal, our quarter four goal. Break it down into 12 weeks. 
throughout the year. I'm a big fan of The 12 Week Year by Brian Moran. It's a fantastic book. He's actually been on my podcast. I'll link that below if you wanna to listen to that episode. But he really talks about how uh, most times people just really don't know how to set those goals and maybe that's you and it's oftentimes been me. So maybe what we're gonna do is, yes, we're doing annualized planning, but we're gonna roadmap it in terms of 12 week segments, right? So quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. And we're gonna write down all of our goals in all areas of our life, personal, business, finance, faith, et cetera, right? All those down, okay. And then the last part is we're gonna actually look at uh, what's required for those things to happen. Let's make them realistic, right? Another book I recommend uh, is actually the book called uh, Your Best Year Ever by Michael Hyatt. And he has a, an acronym that he calls Smarter Goals. I've talked about it often throughout my videos. If you watch the channel, you're probably tired of hearing me talk about it, uh, but it tells you how to actually set goals that you're going to deliver on, right? And part of it is making them smarter and there's again it's broken down as far as how it's specific measurable actionable etc cetera, etc cetera. so the reason that you want to be able to do that is because um aligning the resources that you need to coincide with the goals you have is the most important part of what you're going to be doing here the reason being is that you may and we often do we overestimate what we can do in a year we underestimate what we can do in 10 right so whatever resources that you need throughout your journey, you want three major goals for every single quarter, right? So for quarter one, you want three major goals. Quarter two, you want three major goals. Four, whatever, three, four, one, two, three, four, right? You want three major goals for each. Now, what I want you to do in the last step is to write down what's required. In other words, what are gonna be your biggest challenges or the resources that you don't currently have that are going to be roadblocks for you on that roadmap to hitting your goals for that year specifically, for all the ones that you mapped out for that year specifically. It's very, very, very important. So it could be a virtual assistant. It could be, uh, I don't have the knowledge to run Facebook ads. Uh, it could be, um, I don't have a work environment that is conducive to me shooting video like this so I can't start a YouTube channel, right? So whatever that is, we're gonna make a list of all the things that are required. Now, what's gonna happen is, is that we may have to change up our goals in order because there may be a cost investment for you to get what you need to shoot YouTube. And so maybe your quarter one goal is to increase your sales by 10% so that you can invest in the virtual system to edit videos and so that you can invest in the equipment you need to start doing YouTube. But right now that's not the area of opportunity. And maybe your data is telling you, this is the area we need to exploit. This is the area we can take advantage of to increase sales by 10% so that we can achieve all these other things, right? So it's more of connecting the dots rather than just making a list of goals. That's the part that I really want you to kind of take home is make yourself a path. Look at this as a GPS, draw that plan out, right? So it's not this big hairy thing that you're trying to take on. It's something where you literally have roadmapped the whole thing out and it feels doable. It feels feasible. It feels like something you can accomplish versus, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? And I have this sensation of overwhelm all the time. This should be fun. This should be challenging. This should be rewarding. This shouldn't be, I need washboard abs by tomorrow. Overwhelming, right? So I have to go to the gym and work out 25 hours a day. It's not feasible, it's not possible. So we wanna make this feel like I can do that. It's the next viable step. This is easy, this is tangible, this is feasible, this is practical. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna find our environment. If you can go to Puerto Rico, go to Puerto Rico. We're gonna make sure we like and subscribe to this video or this channel, right? Then we're going to figure out what our major wins are for last year, right? What were the major wins? Really take time to celebrate and have gratitude of those. If you had rewards for yourself, enjoy those rewards. You need to get into that, that fix of giving yourself that dopamine hit every time you hit a reward so that you want more of that. Make a habit of achieving things. Next, we're going to look at the data. What does the data tell you? What is the data suggesting you should be doing uh, and then what are your future upcoming goals? And lastly, what are the major roadblocks to those goals that you've set for yourself? All right, guys, I'm gonna depart this video with showing you guys more amazing footage from Puerto Rico. I wish I could go back right now. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Grab that free resource below. Make sure you guys hit the bell for notifications also because you don't wanna miss the rest of this series. The next video, we're actually gonna be talking about this thing, which is part of what I want you to do next is take those goals you wrote down and put them in this. This is the Full Focus Planner by Michael Hyatt. It is the best, simply the best planner that I've ever come across uh, for high achieving type people. So uh, that all being said, I will see you guys in the next video. See you for the Full Focus Planner video.